Can you share thoughts on the prefixes? Razvan asked. Okay, Razvan. So the prefixes. So when you sort by file name, you can be assured that these prefixes will always sort at the top. That's the reason that I use these basic numbers. Number two is if I open up a, a quick search, which in Obsidian it's Command O on the Mac, then I can just really quickly do like 020, 020, and there's concept right there. And I click on that. So it's an easy way. I, in fact, if I just hit zero, I have my most recent um, home maps all right there. So if I just hit 000, I'm at my home note. That's really nice. Um, these never change. And so although this whole thing is fluid, this provides somewhat of a spatial constellation that I can rely on. Oh, I'm feeling a little scattered. Where do I go? Oh, okay, I know what to do. Just scroll to the top and click back on the home note. It's, it's home base, it's home for a reason. Patrick, I already have the IMF kit. Nick mentioned the light kit would add to the IMF. How do the two kits interact? The light kit replaces the IMF kit. If you already have the IMF kit, what this webinar is, is serving is two purposes, to show you some practical hands-on ways to use it, and two, to really like, hey, Patrick, dive into these home maps because each one organizes information in a different way. The interest map of content here is based on the Dewey Decimal System with a few personal augmentations. And then I have other maps linking here. Check out the, the people, right? So common tags that I use, and then you know different, different ways to structure how I interact with people in my personal knowledge management system. So that's really where you wanna to go to get the whole advantage of the difference of the light kit. Luis asks, how do you use your calendar in Obsidian? Um, honestly, I don't. If you do project management, if you do a lot of task management, which I deliberately avoid doing in Obsidian, then you would want to take advantage of your calendar. That being said, uh, that's why I included it for, for you in the light kit. You can, there's a lot. Of, so here's the link to the calendar MOC. There was a tremendous amount of work that went into linking all this stuff. Some I grabbed from others on the forums and others I did manually. Point being is I just wanted to do the work for, for you and give you the option of figuring out how to incorporate the calendar. Okay, really going to scroll through here. If you don't use folders, how do you search for them in a giant pool of singular notes to link in MOC by searching by for titles or filtering by tags? There are Boolean search rules already available, Edgar. And um, that being said, what I would do, like, hey, I let's say I'm in the bottom up mode where I'm creating things from scratch and I'm creating them really fast tag them like with whatever your 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 temporary or long-term tag is but like let's say it's on you know the cosmos so i'll use the tag cosmos and then i'll quickly you know make 20 notes and then when i'm coming back to review i'll just hashtag cosmos i'll look at those notes and if i haven't already created an moc but then i can start to make sure i don't forget any of those notes Right, that's part of your question. How do you make sure that you don't lose those notes? I can't believe everybody is uh, still around. This is pretty wild. Um, do you find useful to use tags such as idea, concept, book? Tags that define what the note represents. Yeah, I do. And that's from Carlos. So Carlos, I do find that useful. And idea is one that you'll have to, to define yourself. Um, I show you how to define concept in, in some examples that I use in the light kit. And then, yeah, I use book as well. It's just pretty simple. And, you know, books are books. They're like a, books are a very clear object, right? Books will never be people. But, you know, a book is by a person. Point being is a book is a pretty safe tag to use. That's what I'm trying to get at. 
Joel, hey, I hope you're, you're still around. Thank you so much for the question. What are the advantages of using a home link everywhere rather than just opening the file you're looking for with, um, with the quick switcher and taking advantage of auto completion? That's a good question. And honestly, the advantage is a personal one and you, your mileage may vary. So let's go back to the habit example. So I have these top links and this one goes to mindset. Mindset goes to home. Do we need those? We don't. We don't need any of this front matter linking. Um, the reason I use it is because I find it to be helpful to bounce around. And I also think, and I, and I don't have the, the scientific data to back this up, or I just haven't like found and assembled it, but I am a believer in repetition like improving any skill, I believe in reps. And as minor as it is, I believe in the value of, of if I'm at my habit MOC of being able to jump back, whatever I consider back and above. And for me, that's the mindset MOC. So yeah, I could just have it go to home or I could just use the quick switcher. But what I'm trying to do is, you know, create this sort of amoeba-like fluid framework structure in my own mind and and that's kind of why i use these front matter links additionally i do like just kind of clicking around quickly i do think there's somewhat of an advantage with that but to your point no functionality is lost Ooh. so is linking your thinking the complete opposite of progressive summarization well i'll be i'll be um political on this one. I got into a little bit of heat because I went a little bit too strongly against progressive summarization. There is certainly value to it. What I want to get at is that you, hmm, how can I best put this? We are in the age of the linked note. Do you want to be a note taker or a note maker? Which one do you think makes more value, creates more value? Note making creates more value, not just for other people, but for yourself. Like that's, that's you thinking and working on ideas. So note making is more valuable. Progressive summarization is more in this note taking side of things where, you know, you're, you're highlighting and bolding and sure, this is valuable. You should do this, but I'm just saying like, if there's a spectrum, this is, you know, um, a, a line graph and you know, this total value is 100%. Progressive summarization should not be 70% of what you do. It shouldn't be 50%. In my opinion, it should be closer to like 10 or 15%. And that means that 85% is dedicated to the progressive ideation, you know, the note making side of things. So that's truly like, I mean, that's probably the best, simplest way to think about it. Whatever you're doing, if you're a progressive summarizer, whatever you're doing, minimize and life will be better because that means you're spending more time creating real value both for yourself and for anybody that you're sharing this information with. Side note, any conversation that you enter is you sharing that value with other people. So it doesn't have to be a blog. It doesn't have to be an article. This work in note making informs your every conversation. Let that sink in. That's powerful. Um, Anonymous asks, I am new to PKM, would light be appropriate for things like reference material, work projects, people management, or only knowledge notes? That's a great question. So I use it for reference material. I use it mainly for knowledge notes, as you know, and I use it for people management. Not, not excessively, but I love, the, like, I love what it can do with the people management. I also use it for work projects. Um, the entire light workshop was created in, in Obsidian using you know, the linking your thinking methods of maps and how these maps relate. So I use it for projects. I use it for people management. What I don't do is I don't use tasks. I don't worry too much about any project management, task management, any G D GTD. You can do all this with, with linking your thinking. Just me personally, I know where I derive joy. I know where I create value. And it's not through, through that process. I hope that gives you some clarity. But you absolutely can accomplish any of this project or task management using this 
framework. And that's the beauty of, of the linking your thinking framework with maps and this home note is that it's completely fluid, it's completely customizable to your situation. What I'm trying to show here is how you can take advantage of that. Because when you go from folders to links, you have to kind of change how you think about things. Joel, another question. How atomic should notes be? Your notes often seem like short essays with a lot of subparts. When do you think they should be broken up? Uh, great question. And there, there's no simple answer for that. I kind of, I prefer thinking about the principle of atomicity, how it works for me, that it doesn't have to be like an idea or you know, like a sentence or two, but that it can be more like a, a page, maybe like half a page. That's kind of my uh, personal rule of thumb. I, I think the concept notes do a good example of showing ideas around that. So like here's anti-fragility. There is a specific way I'm structuring this that I go over in the workshop, but I like to start with something like this at the top, um, some basic ideas. And, uh, and this really doesn't have my personal thoughts other than my um, bulleted thoughts. So let's try to go into another one. Yeah, so what I'm trying to get at is everything I see here is on one page and I don't have to scroll. That's kind of my rule of thumb, but there are, there are definitely other notes that I have to scroll, like evergreen notes. That's a huge, huge thing. So on this one, yeah, I do have some scrolling, um, but even so, it, I don't have to scroll too much. Um, and then if we click on some of the notes it goes to, these can be pretty short. So the answer is, I don't know, not a clear answer, but I hope, I hope it's helpful.